We, they couldn't find a, a moderator, they double booked, and they're like, well, we have anime nerds, they must play Red Dead Redemption. And I literally got a phone call going, have you ever played Red Dead Redemption 2? And this is, and no exaggeration, I'm like, bitch, 94% on PS4, I mean, what? <laughs> so I'm very happy, if you guys grab a seat, I'm gonna have you each introduce yourselves, and I'm gonna sit here and fanboy and listen to your voices while looking away, because I'm such a big fan of this game. One more time for the cast, folks. <laughs> I'm going to start with you on the way down. You can introduce yourself and state your role for the audience. Sure. Hi, I'm Alex McKenna, and I play Sadie Adler. Hi, I'm Benjamin Byron Davis, and I play Dutch Vanderwood. Hello, everyone. Roger Clark here. I play Arthur Morgan. Woo! My name is Rob Weedoff, and I play the John Marston. So, so as we get started, um, we're going we're gonna to just start a conversation. We'll bring in some questions from the audience. Uh, my first question, uh, as a fan of the game and just fan of the game production, how long, because I don't read stuff online, so this is where I take my opinion. How long or how much time did each of you spend in the recording booth for your respective characters, uh, recording all the lines for such a, a wide open world game? Uh, well, I can tell you that um, we worked on this game for about five years, but most of it was not in a recording studio. Most of it was done in a giant motion capture, performance capture situation, which means that we were in what I like to call uh, superhero scuba diver suits. That have, that have these balls on them so that all the cameras around the studio where we're essentially doing theater on the round together uh, with cameras close up in our faces, which is why it looks very much like us. Uh, yeah, and I mean, off and on for, for five years. There was a little bit of voiceover recording. Five was, years? Yeah. Ouch, okay. <laughs> I, did, I did probably, I, I think, record in over 200 days performance capture and it's probably about 20 days in the with, with the helmet on capturing. I'm a math nerd and I'm doing 365 days a year, 225, my god, that's like three so quarters of a year of your life. It was it, longer than high school. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to talk about Oh yeah, we're rolling down. You're next. Yeah. Uh, performance capture, brand new, you know, it's this medium that we had the luxury to, to, to learn more of. And of course, I mean, Ben and Rob had, had done it before on Red Dead Redemption, and I had done it before on previous video games. But, you know, the technology, we got to see it unfold in front of our very eyes, you know, and it's uh, this brand new medium that is now the main way that most major performances are captured in video games now. And you see it as well. Marvel Studios, you see Mark Ruffalo dressed up as, in his, his tight spandex with the balls on when he's being a hug, etc. So it's really becoming a very prevalent way to capture performances, not just with video games, but with film as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how many days I've worked. Um, more than me, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I know that I worked more days on Red Dead Redemption 2 than I did on Red Dead Redemption, and I wasn't even a playable character. So uh, it was really, really a cool experience. Working with Rockstar is, is just really a gift. They are all really cool people, and they're obviously very successful. I think a lot of people would imagine that a company that successful globally would be really uh, cutthroat, really, uh, really. What it is, though, it's a uh, it's a bunch of really motivated, very talented people who are very supportive of each other, very supportive of all the actors, and it was a really, really cool experience. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have 
been able to experience. It's always good to hear when, because when, there's so much negative press, but you turn me down. Wow, no, I'm, I've got that scary <laughs> voice. When you hear a lot of negative press, nice press mic, you have scary Why did you get the good mic? You can hear it. I don't know. <laughs> that's why I, I, I literally was doing the... That's all right, we're we're trying trying to, We so. can project. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, you know, you hear so much negative press for video game companies. It's always really nice to hear when, when there are companies that, that do care. And I think that carries on into the quality of the product because, I mean, the, the game is just a worldwide phenomenon at this point. So... But you, think, you, you think about all the, the, the different people that are working on, on a title like Red Dead, and every one of them is at the top of their game, and every one of them is working as hard as they can. We were all dedicated to a, 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 a single goal, and that was to create as fine a story, as fine an experience for all the humans we could. And that was from the person who's working on you know, the, the horse balls, the shrinking, <laughs> which he just did on his own, I was told. He just did it on, it was an elect, oh, I can do that, that'll, that'll work. Everybody's thinking with that kind of granular detail about uh, how to make this thing unlike anything that ever existed before. And it's fun, so we all go for the worst details. When, when we were talking before you came in, I, I, I pointed out that my wife enjoys loving me play because the game is beautiful. And I'm like, it's, it's gorgeous, the landscapes of this, the horse pooping. <laughs> so, do we have any questions in the audience? Please raise your hand if you do. If, uh, when I call, if you stand up so we can hear you, please. Yep, yes, sir. Watch your. Um, my question is: so I know celebrities uh, do have their movies and stuff are recognized from their physical appearance. Usually, you guys have the voice. Do you guys get recognized uh, as your characters, even though you do mocap uh, when you're uh, out in real life? Hi, Stavros. Hey. Thanks for the question. Right? Uh, not a lot, although it has happened a bit. Um, now, I, I, I'm not sure whether that's so much from the game as it is from my social media, but I was in my hometown with my boys. I was in a diner once a couple of weeks ago, and this, this young woman came up and said, excuse me, are you Roger Clark? And before I could say anything, my four-year-old son went, yeah, and I'm Rory Clark, and that's Colin Clark. <laughs> So it's, it's starting to happen, yeah. But, uh, you know, it's funny, because I, I went into a GameStop a couple of months ago to buy a copy for my Super, because he's awesome, and he, you know, he hadn't played the game yet. And I, uh, so I'm at the cashier, and I'm buying it, and he says, oh, you know, this is a really good game. You know what won, you know what won Game of the Year? And I went, no, I don't think it did, pal. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking at me like, how are you so sure? And I went, ah, just forget about it. <laughs> Uh, what about the rest of you? Any, any issues or? or? I, I've gone through TSA in Boston to come up here, and one of the agents said, "I know you. <laughs> You're from Dutch." And I said, "Yeah, yeah. Who are you?" His name is Wes. But then we went when we flew to uh, Philly. Yeah. So we're flying to Philly, a very early flight, and I'm at the. Don't think less of me. I'm getting a bloody Mary at about five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I sit down next to a guy, and he looks at me, and he's like. Uh, Dutch? Dutch? <laughs> I go, yeah, man, how'd you know I was Dutch? He goes, I'm like, Sadie's gonna be here any minute. And then Alex walked up and he was like, oh my god! <laughs> you look just like Sadie! <laughs> Sounds like her, too. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, and I actually always wear hats, and hats like this, and, and it was a funny thing where when you look at these cons and people going, gosh, you, you dress like her, too. I was like, no, she dresses like me. <laughs> the chicken before the egg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I live in a really small town, and I grew up in that town, so I think people know who I am just because I'm from there. And so, I, when I travel, if I'm going to a city where there's a convention, there have been a couple people that have said, I, you're John Marston, right? And I think, well, yeah, but you know that because you're going to the show that I'm going to. But, uh, <laughs> no, you know, people don't. They don't put it together. I, I don't look like John. If, maybe if I if I talk and I'm by the right person, they might think, that sounds familiar, right, but no. Which is absolutely fine. It's really fun to come and meet so many fans and so many cool people at these things, but but just walking around on the street, a lot of celebrities that are recognizable can't walk anymore, can't do anything. 
we could go wherever we want. <laughs> It's funny you said if you're standing by the right people, the number of copies of that game out there at this point, though, there's a lot of the right people that are going to hear you now. So, perfect. Who else has a question? All right, right there, the, my, my singing friend. It's not a question. I have something for a question. What's that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You were dressed up. The, Sean. Sean, that's right. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. What's your name again? Oh, come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, there you go. Check that out, folks. The technical term for this is bad ass. <laughs> and it's really fun looking in the face when he speaks, isn't it? Hold, hold that up and say something. Badass. <laughs> Thank you for your face. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Great straight there. Yes, sir. Go ahead and say that. My question is for Mr. Marston. What was it like stepping back in the shoes of John Marston after the wild success that ran out of Dennis Wildman? What was it like to step back into the role of John Marston uh, after the success of the first game? Um, Really, really a cool experience. I, I saw a lot of familiar faces. Our, our director specifically, who is such a really fun, cool guy. Um, and it, obviously, John's younger in this game, and we kind of had a discussion about what. So what? What is the deal? Is he just kind of a little punk kid? And he's like, yeah, basically, yeah. He wants to fit in, he wants to be cool like the guys that he looks up to, but he doesn't know how, and he doesn't have a reason to have that respect that they get yet. So he's frustrated, and I thought, so it's just like me when I was in high school. My sister was a senior, and all of her friends and their boyfriends would come over, and I thought it was so cool, and I'd crack a joke and think everybody was going to laugh, and they looked at me like, would you get out of here? <laughs> so I thought, that's great, I already know how to do it. Perfect. <laughs> That's a good question. All right, let's go Superman over here. Oh my. Hey guys, a quick question. Arthur, we need the money. Please say, Arthur, we need the money. Please say, it's okay, girl, it's just a scratch. <laughs> Arthur, we need the money, and it's okay, girl, it's just a scratch. <laughs> Arthur. We need the money. <laughs> it's okay, girl, it's just a scratch. <laughs> All right, my Xbox friend over there, go ahead stand up. We had a lot of talks before you came. Mine is about Vandalin. What do you think of the character as he was slowly slipping into madness? Spoilers. Okay. <laughs> Spoilers. Um, well, I'll tell you. Uh, you don't often get to play a part like Dutch. Like, never do you get to play a part like Dutch. It's just remarkable to me. Fascinating. Uh, vexing. Uh, devious. But I... The playing the descent, I think, and I was talking to somebody at the table uh, earlier today, I think in a lot of ways it's probably as hard for me to have played it as it is for somebody who cares about the character to watch him go through it. Uh, because Dutch was um, so uh, confused and uh, uncertain, and I think that that all Spoiler alert, centers around, well, without spoiling it, it centers around the fact that he doesn't have access to Hosea's counsel, and he loses uh, faith in his ability to trust. And so he turns to the most um, constant voice of support that happens to be played by the amazing Peter Blomquist, uh, Mike Bell. Uh, and that was probably the wrong guy for Dutch to be listening to. So, the, the short answer is, playing it broke my heart.
I'm not going to make you stand up, but all the way in the back with the leg. Oh, I met you. <laughs> this was he was playing rugby. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Um, I remember when I, with that scene we did where I gave you my hat, which there are two versions of really, but uh, and we were about f over four years in to the contract by the time we started doing all those missions. And uh, the animators were very helpful because they always constantly were giving us context as to what was happening narratively around whatever scene we were working on. And uh, the amazing Matt Tempest, Jason Barnes, and, Matt Beak, who's the Canadian, they would, uh, they always kept reminding us, you know, you guys, you guys have just done a bank robbery, John, you've been shot, Arthur, you're half dead from TV, and like that epic, epic, crazy voyage towards the end, they kept reminding us how, how exhausting and tiring it was, but, um, yeah, I remember when we first got the, our size for that. Typically, we would get our pages about a week in advance, and uh, then we'd learn it, and you know, we would practice and whatnot, and run lines in the green room. And uh, by that point, we were a gang. The actors were a gang, you know, because we had been working together for so long. So it was quite emotional for me, and especially because you had been such an awesome mentor for me, you know, because you you had been through it before, and I hadn't. And you would say stuff like, you know, people are going to get tattoos of you. And I was like, no, no, they're not. And, you know, but Rob was so, so, uh, such a great teacher, you know, and he, he telling me what to expect and what not. And then when we did that scene, it was very much a role reversal because Arthur is John's mentor, you know. And I remember giving you that hat and stuff. That was, we, we only got, we got it done in about three or four takes, I think, didn't we? Yeah, I think we did. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> that was, uh, th that scene, I think, was, it was the last scene. I mean, we may have done it, like, one of the versions, I guess, mm. somewhere, but we ended shooting with that scene, right? The one, yeah, if, if, spoilers, 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 but if you decide to go back for the money and John gives, uh, Arthur gives John his hat in that situation, <coughs> that was the last well, performance capture scene. Yeah. yeah, well, me too. And it was, uh, we were all kind of made aware this is the last shoot, and then we were on the last day of the last shoot. And so there, on the stage that we use, there are probably, I don't know how many people are kind of off stage on computers doing whatever they do, and then there are the director and a few animators, and there are probably 15 maybe or so rock star people, and then however many actors are playing their characters on set um, but there are several other people that are in the building that are never on the stage so for that scene they brought everybody in and it was really a big deal because everybody had worked so hard for so long on this game and it was such a a big moment too in the game so all of that combined it gives me it gives me almost yeah. i'm not gonna cry but it really was a big, big moment, and it was so cool. And when they when they decided to take the the take that we did, and, and Rod with his familiar cut, take that. Yeah. When he said that, just everybody, everybody just started clapping, and clapping. And he gave you this long, the longest hug ever. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And I did tear up then, and which is funny too because I thought. Me as a person, if I was in this situation, I would absolutely be standing there. I would, I would bring him with me. I don't care what it took, what he wanted. It would be you're coming with me. That you're not going out any other way. But because that wasn't my choice. But so John, I said, how emotional does does John need to be right now? And I was asking. What I was thinking was, would he cry right now? And so the first time I asked it, the director was like, you know. It's a pretty big deal. And then he kind of walked away, and I thought, you don't understand what I'm asking. So I asked him again, and he was like, yeah, you know. And I said, 
and he realized what I was saying. He said, John Marston does not cry. <laughs> and I thought, okay, okay, I know that much. But I almost did. I'm trying to get through the scene. It was really, really a, a big moment. I enjoyed it a lot. Now, I have an important question to spin off of that. Does anybody in the audience have an Arthur Morgan tattoo? <laughs> Not yet. Okay, I was just going to check for us. All right. Someone's going to get one. It's huh? going to happen. All right, let's get you right, right here. Sure. Uh, I love going back to the camp. It's like fantastic. And a lot of those, do you record you guys singing together? Yeah. Well, I guess you guys are doing it together. When you guys would go to the camp and record the campfire songs, was that together or separately, or how did you guys record that? For me, it was a bit of both. Um, uh, we all learned the songs together. I remember we would practice them. A lot of people ask me what my favorite scene to do in Red Dead was, and it's kind of a tie. One is when you go fishing with Dutch and Hosea after rescuing Trelawney, and you're singing in the in the boat. That was done together. Uh, I was rowing in a makeshift canoe. <laughs> and um, we had been practicing the songs, and like I said earlier, you know, we had been working together at that stage of almost five years, so we, we had become very close friends. But then another one that, that I particularly remember where we all did it together was, um, spoilers, 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 when you bring Jack back from Bronte and that wonderful party where Javier plays the guitar and he sings that amazing song. That was one of the days where all the gang was really there, and, it was, a, it was a very emotional time because we were celebrating, you know, it was one of the few bits in the game where the times are good and everybody's happy and it was just wonderful to share that with everyone. But then some of the other random stuff, like uh, that I did a lot of, of actually was voice acting in the booth. Um, and I uh, was speaking to someone else earlier today about that, you know, the, the, car the guy who plays Uncle is wonderfully played by James McBride. Uh, he actually wasn't the, the, the initial casting for Uncle. It was uh, originally, it was Spider in your game, but then in our game we had a wonderful actor by the name of John O'Craig, who unfortunately passed away. But, um, so when James wonderfully stepped in, he ADR'd all of John O'Craig's lines in the booth, but Rockstar did keep John singing. So whenever you hear Uncle sing in Red Dead 2, it's John O'Craig, the original Uncle that wonderful people unfortunately didn't get to see a lot of his work but you do get to hear him sing around the campsite and they also named O'Craze Ron that's right that's John right. yeah. he was a hell of a guy yeah okay let's uh I've been doing this side of the room let's go over here uh you know with glasses right there stand up so we can some of the, the newer stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was a very exciting call because, you know, I was like, oh wow, they're already doing the third game? Great. <laughs> but uh, no, they gave me a call and of course everything is very top secret always and uh, was just excited to come back. I, truly, they didn't really tell me what I was doing until I got there, which is yeah. very, uh, it's Rockstar's MO. Yeah. I, mean, half, I mean, for the first two years, I had no idea that I was the character that I become in the story. I was like, oh yeah, she's she's pretty cool. And then, you know, by year three, I was like, oh wow, she's, she's fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, they gave me a call and then um, I was very exciting because they were interviewing husbands yeah. for me and I got to, to work with a great actor and got to hear a little bit more that, that or an experience a little bit more that had been referred to in the actual game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always ready if, if they're listening for some more missions. I, I like that question because, again, I said my wife has watched me play. You are her favorite character. <laughs> so, yeah, what is it like playing such a, a strong female role in obviously a, a male dominated time period of history? Well, I think it was wonderfully progressive of Rockstar to, to have this woman who, when you meet her, has just been brutalized, I mean, the worst of the worst that can occur to somebody. Um, fortunately, there weren't any children there. It's the only way it would have been worse than it already was. 
and watch her develop into this strong, powerful, take no prisoners, however, still have a heart where she loves the people she loves, is incredibly loyal to them, um, and is in a love interest, which I thought was one of the cooler decisions, even though I know a lot of people were hoping that something would happen, but I think it gives her this autonomous force presence in the game that she's not being uh, evaluated in relation to a man. Um, so it was amazing. So she's the greatest role I've played thus far. I mean, Sadie Adler is like a heart human for me, and, and to get to bring her to life is my great honor. Great question. Thanks for asking that. And I know again, my wife and watching it was probably she, she would what you guys missed was my wife would watch tell me not to kill animals and then <laughs> give her commentary and that was the biggest point she brought out is so this is a female character yeah does she have a love interest i'm like no she's like good <laughs> yeah. all right gentlemen right there the blue shirt yes <laughs> being really bad at it <laughs> so they have to do it so long that they have no other choice. Let's <laughs> well, just get a different girlfriend. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what else would I have done? His answer's better than mine. <laughs> you, you in the hat, sir. Two questions for Mr. Vanderlyn. Uh, what do you think you realized Dutch was uh, I'm not sure if it's the last word, but you think Dutch sort of you were descending into madness with your character. Well, I, I do think, I mean, I think that the writers did something very uh, intelligently um, in that whatever's gone wrong with him, it's going wrong already when the story is in motion. Um, so we have this, there's still this great echo of this Blackwater Massacre that existed in the first game too. I thought they'd answer the question when I came back. I, figured we were going to do it. We never did it. Um, and I think that that was really rather genius because we don't know exactly what snapped in him. But I do like that you pointed to, to Angela Bronte, that scene with uh, uh, Jim Peary. When, uh, when there was That greasy son of a bitch set us up. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I won't repeat that. <laughs> no, but I will. I, I will say that there is. A, 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 I'm fond of pointing out the fact that uh, Bronte. There's a line that got cut uh, on the skiff when uh, um, uh, Dutch has Bronte tied up and the whole gang's around him. Bronte says, uh, you know, offers 10,000 bucks to everybody in the gang to, to, to turn on Dutch, and none of them do. Uh, as Dutch gets to full froth, he uh, said, uh, which are you, a law-abiding citizen or a self-appointed king? And in the play of that, and the, the sort of uh, my thoughts about these beautiful words that Dan Hauser had written, um, was that in, in Bronte, Dutch sort of saw the bankruptcy of his own ideas, that what Dutch wanted to be was what Bronte sort of was. And uh, I think it, it repulsed Dutch, and he, he did what he did. But that certainly sent him further, the cheese further off the cracker. That's a great question, I think. Oh, you had a second question? Okay. Since, since completing the game, have you and the cast made actual plans to go to Tahiti? No. <laughs> it's a funny thing that that became... I, it wasn't like while we were making this game, did you think Tahiti was that big a deal? No, I don't, no, no. And people sort of grabbed onto it's it. Funny. Like, it's all right, boy, a little bit. 
too, yeah. you know? You never know what the wet shots are. Oh, oh, that's a great idea for a corporate retreat awesome. for Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> so so if anybody's, anybody's recording, just post the video, tag Rockstar. This is an amazing idea. <laughs> so, great question. Um, let's go to this side again. Uh, in the back with the black hair, the black hair. Yes, I'm pointing at you. You'll to your right. Stand. Yep. Uh, this is for all of you. I was just wondering what your favorite like individual lines are for your characters. Big fan of the game also. So what was your favorite line in the entire game with hours and hours of recording? <laughs> Pick one. All right, I got one. Uh, nobody forgets. Nothing gets forgiven. I really like that line because that was used in a trailer for the first game and probably somewhere in the first game, but I'm not sure. But if you, as Arthur, if you walk by and you find John and Hosea sitting there talking to each other, John's kind of trying to figure out what's going on. He's already realizing this this is not this is not right. We've got to change what we're doing. We got to this is bad. Asking Hosea, what's what's going to happen here? And Hosea says, no, this, and people are going to forget. And then John says the line again. I just really like the line. And, it, and I said it to two different games, so it's my turn. <laughs> I like, um, uh, pretty, it's uh, on the sheep, the sheep stealing mission with John at the beginning of that. There's a bit of sibling, sibling rivalry at the beginning. And Arthur is one of the people in the camp, I think, in the gang. Sorry, that so sees the, the end coming, you know, and um, I really like the fact that that is a huge source of conflict within the gang. And some of them know that their time is coming and others don't. And Arthur says something like, you know, I was the prize pony once, but this life, this way, we're the last, I reckon, and we ain't long for it. <laughs> There's too many. I'm in Dutch. There's a lot. Uh, it came up yesterday, though, on the first game, on the first day where we worked, the first scene we did, that was uh, the professor and you upstairs and me downstairs. We were really right next to each other because that's a long story. But uh, there's a line Dutch has that I liked a lot. Two lines in there. One is you say you always were a good speaker, and Dutch just goes, I was. I like that. <laughs> But in that same scene, he says, would you kindly send the professor out here so we can show him what we really think about the art of anthropology? <laughs> I like that one a lot. I have to say he's got a, a lot of great one-liners. Um, oh, man. I, it's really a hard question. I mean, I, I know... I feel like when I when I say I ain't afraid of dying, that's one of my favorites because I think it's the most revealing of her and really where she's at when when she comes into her own and her power, which makes her a little trigger happy, um, but also you know a great addition to the gang because she's absolutely fearless. Uh, yeah, I feel like I mean one of Arthur's line where he says we're more ghosts than people is just it it's a haunting line to me when I think of the game. Yeah, so that's Alex's favorite. Good question. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's go all the way to the back with the hat. Let me see. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I really really love is your whole cast seems so close. I mean, you have to be after working for five years together. Um, did you guys work with each other often and then get a chance to chill out with each other, like hang out afterwards? And if so, like what you guys do? <laughs> So in five years of working together, did you guys become close? And outside recording, did you guys would you guys hang out afterwards and do things together? Oh yeah, sure. You know, because like Ben lives in LA and Rob's in Indiana. And Alex, you were you kind of you, you moved. Right? You started off in New York and then moved to LA. Uh, it was funny because whenever we were doing performance capture together, typically it would be a three week block, and you know, uh, old friends would come back whenever they they had lines and. Uh, because the NDA was so strict, as, as we mentioned before, you know, we had no one else to talk about about the work except each other. So yes, many a beer was had <laughs> out in Long Island, you know, and we'd be in a little booth somewhere and, you know, some 18, 19 year old waiter would come and take our orders and as they'd walk away, we'd look at each other and go, 
I wonder if he knows, if he's a big Red Dead fan, if he knows what the hell he just served, you know? <laughs> uh, I remember once I had a little Rockstar sticker on my phone once, and I just had it on the table, as you do, you know, and, and the, the guy goes, oh yeah, Rockstar, they're awesome. Hey, have you heard they're gonna make a new Red Dead? <laughs> I was like, oh really? Oh, that's great. I love that, because I loved the first one. That was awesome. <laughs> but yeah, we totally, I mean, we, we always, I, everyone I can say with my hand on my heart had a deep, deep respect and love for the story, and we wanted to serve the narrative as well as possible. So, you know, we talked and talked and explored each other's characters and, and certain storylines in, in great, great detail, because we, uh, we knew uh, how much the previous Red Dead Redemption was so much loved by the fans, and we wanted to uh, to pay respect to that and try and do the best job that we could. So, yeah, a lot of deep friendships were formed over talking about our work and you know having beers and you know and just you know, talking about the performance capture and everything. It was yeah, absolutely great question. Yeah. All right, we're well, going to get one more question in, and okay, you did the thing. You got my attention. It worked. You waved your hand enough. So, in the green shirt. Um, so, how much have you, all of you guys, how much have you played the games yourselves, and how do you dress your Arthur? <laughs> how much have you played the games yourselves, and when you do, how do you dress your Arthur? I'm going to get this out of the way. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't played any of. And I haven't played any of the first game either, or Undead Nightmare. And it's not because I don't want to, it's because I have two young kids. And um, I was gone from, them. they were two when I started and they were six when I basically came back home. So now that I'm home, I don't think it's fair for me to go say, hey, all right, you guys hang out and I'm gonna go play a video game that I was in. So I really will enjoy playing these games at some point and I'll sit in my chicken coop, that's my game room, and I will hang out for months and enjoy every second of it. But it's just not the right time for me yet. Well, I also have two small boys and I played the hell out of it. To be fair, the only time I could was in the middle of the night, so I didn't, there was a lot of lost sleep. You know, uh, I'm on my second playthrough now. Uh, it, uh, you know, Arthur's slightly, he doesn't look exactly like me, there's enough of a resemblance, there's not enough of a resemblance where I can look at it objectively, so it's interesting to just see how the work panned out. That's what my first playthrough, my wife very graciously, she gave me four days to play it nonstop once it came out, and I didn't even get to chapter three. But, um, yeah, and my Arthur, I started him off, I like him in black, and I keep him pretty trimmed, like neatly trimmed with a bit of stubble. And then, uh, but then, you know, as the story progressed, you know, I would try different things out, and I would, I, I liked him with a beard by the end of it, he had a big beard, because I feel that he grows as a character, and, you know, as do all the characters in Red Dead Redemption 2, I think that he changes, and so his, his outward appearance should reflect that. I don't have any children, <laughs> and uh, I just two weeks ago got 100% complete. On the <laughs> seven days, ten hours, according to the little thing at the bottom. I'm, I am proud. Uh, in the first playthrough, I kept the costume canonical. I did exactly as the developers intended, I suppose. Blue shirt. The blue shirt in the summer and then the, the duster coat and the, and the regular temperature in the winter. Um, and then the second playthrough, uh, all sorts of things. I change the costume up all the time. How about you? Well, um, truth, I have not finished it myself. I have watched it a lot. <laughs> uh, so I didn't really get to make the fashion choices so much. Um, I, I kept them with it mostly just stuff how, how it was. I didn't get super creative because I was very distracted by everything I could be doing. Um, so yeah, I will, I will in, in spurts keep playing, but um, I've watched a few different people play and it's, uh, it's a really magical thing. It's like watching a giant movie, which I really enjoy because I, 
I get really frustrated. Apparently my hands get very tense. I don't know how to relax into playing just yet. So I was waking up and kind of couldn't move. My, my, that's just almost too into it. So yeah, I find being a, a spectator gets me farther faster. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Red Dead Redemption. Thank you, as quick as we can get there, right? Come on, come on. Yeah, so what we're going to do for the rest of the afternoon, you guys are here tomorrow too, correct? Yeah. For the rest of the weekend, if you head to the exhibitors hall, if we did not get to your question, please stop by, say hi to each one of them. And one more time, round of applause. <laughs>